of beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, someone who is considerably more YouTube famous than I is the very beautiful Tammy Clark, whom I have followed for a considerable amount of time. I discovered her through Karmi. Um, and I, I can't remember who I discovered Karmi through, but I fell in love with the Italian. Um, and he's best friends with Tammy, so they, they used to guest on each other's channels, and that's how I discovered Tammy. And I love the looks that she does. They're so bright and colourful and yeah. Um, I didn't buy her first palette because, to be honest, the colour story didn't grab me. However, the Tropical Carnival palette is much more my style. So, if you want to find out exactly how well this little girl behaves, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome back from the intro. It is a blisteringly hot uh, again. So, the fan is on. You will have seen this in the intro. You probably already know what the inside looks like. But I'm going to show you anyway. It's got one of those... That, oh no, I've got, hang on a minute. I've got a little bit of concealer on the end of it. Just, let me just get rid of that. There we go. Right, let's try that again. Um, it's got one of those, instead of having the names printed inside it, which is what they've been doing with their more recent palettes, it's one of those silly flippity flippity things again. So I've actually stuck that onto the mirror so that I still know the names. But these are the colours. Obviously, it's the other way up, but I don't want to blind you with the mirror. The top row and this one are all shimmers, the rest are mattes, and this one and this one are both pressed pigments. So, uh, this is a teaching channel, um, my top keeps falling off, hence why I put a sports bra on underneath. Um, this is a teaching channel. So I go through everything step by step, I do all the blending in real time, um, I don't speed anything up, I don't cut anything out, except the, the putting on of foundation and stuff, because this is about applying the eye makeup. I have different films when it comes to applying foundation, this is about eye makeup. Um, so if I'm going too slowly for you, please use the speed widget and speed me up. Uh, because I want to make sure that everybody can follow me, even complete beginners who've never picked up a brush before. Right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed with my usual antiperspirant primer, but even that is struggling right now. And on my eyes I've got the Crow and Pebble, I should remember the name of this by now, uh, Blank Page Cotton. Um, eyeshadow primer. Now, regular viewers will know I used to use concealer or the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. That Crow and Pebble one is fabulous. Um, I picked it up initially to use with their pigments to give their pigments the best look possible and because I'm running out of white concealer and I, because they were pastel pigments I wanted a white base so I thought they do little tester pots like this, as well as full size pots, and they got it in six different colours. Uh, the deepest two being a very, very deep chocolate and a black, so you can get whatever you're looking for. Um, absolutely love it. I do have a discount code with them. It's not affiliated. I don't earn from it. Okay? Right. It's all listed in my description box 
below. Now let's get you zoomed in. I'm just going to talk you through eye shapes again. I do this with every film in case it's the first time you've seen it. Now, I've got what's known as deep set or double lidded eyes. And a lot of people who've got this assume they have hooded eyes because we have the same problems. We get transfer of shimmer onto the upper lid. When we're cutting our crease, we can't just cut the socket shape. We have to go up onto the lid, the upper lid. Um, and even when we use glitter glues, if we put glitter on, we usually end up with a bare patch right through the crease there. So people assume they've got hooded lids. Nine times out of ten, they haven't. When you look forward with your brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. Not much of it, but you can see it. So I've not got hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have either a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eyelid. I'm just going to show you the difference. If I cover my mobile eyelid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much space again that folds back in. And if I cover my static eyelid and do the same, you can see I've got a big bit of skin there as well that tucks back in. So that's why we have the same issues as people with hooded lids. However, we don't have hooded lids because we can see our mobile lid. Now, if you do have completely hooded lids, you can still follow my tutorials, you can still follow everybody's tutorials. Get yourself a brush like this, and just on your static lid, draw a line where you want your new crease to be, so you are creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do, and you can follow my tutorials without any problems at all. Right, I'm going to go with this Luxie 205 tapered blending brush. It's clean, it's just stained. White bristles, they always do. Um, I want to use the two pressed pigments in here to see what they're like. So I'm going to be using lilac and purple on my lid. I need to do something that's going to work on the eye. So I think I'm going to go into the blues, because blues, greens and purples are the most difficult colours to use. So if a palette has them, I tend to use them, particularly on first impressions, just to see how good they are. So I'm dipping into the shade called Bacchanal, which is this uh, bright blue on the bottom, which I've just managed to flick onto the yellow. Well done, bomber. Now, obviously, I've not set this, but it's not a sticky tacky base. But because I've not set it yet, I'm just going to tap this colour on, rather than blending straight away. Because the colour will tend to grab where you place it initially because the eyelid primer is doing what it's meant to do, it's holding on to the colour. Now, if you don't like that, you can set the eyeshadow base with a translucent powder or a face powder that's the same colour as your skin. However, you will find that you won't get as bright a payoff from the shadows that you would do if you did it like this. And it's really simple, you just need to tap all the colour into place until you've built it up to the level you want. And then pick up a little bit more pigment on the brush and just start very gentle circular movements just to soften the edges. Now when we're doing circular movements, when we're going towards the nose, we circle going towards the nose. When we're coming back, we circle the opposite way. What this does, because I'm 45, okay, so my eyelids are 45, and they're not as taut as they were when I was 25, so they move around. 
But by doing this with your brush, if I do it really, really slowly, can you see you're very gently moving the skin around without pulling it. Always hold your brush right at the end so that you're putting as little pressure as possible onto your eye. And uh, that way, the only thing is with this side, because I'm blind in this eye, it got pulled around a lot when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. You can see I've got super, super deep creasing here. And sometimes that circular movement that I did on the other eye isn't effective on this one and I have to actually stretch the lid out. Um, and I always have to stretch the lid when I'm putting shimmers and stuff on the mobile lid because otherwise the colours just, they, they sort of fill up the creases like it's the Grand Canyon. And then throughout the day as I'm sort of moving my eye and, you know, like you do, moving your face around, assuming you can and you've not had Botox, um, I end up getting like little showers of shimmer coming down my face all day. Which, if you want to gradually get colourful uh, freckles throughout the day, it's a great way of doing it. However, if that's not the look you're going for, then you might want to... Uh, yeah. So, if the circular movement works for you, always do that. Um, if it doesn't, I'll show you what I have to do with mine in just a moment. So I'm now at the stage where I've just popped a little bit of extra pigment on, just to buff the edges and soften them up a little bit. So you can see I do actually circle over those bits. Now if you feel that when you're blending you've taken some of the colour away, just pick up a little bit more and just twirl back over it again. I do sometimes struggle sort of here and here with my eyes with pigment and um, if that's the case you just go back to your tapping movements to build it back up again. Uh, but this seems to be coping quite well. Oh yeah, can you see what I mean about the tiger striping that I'm getting there? So I'm just going to have to very very gently pick up a little bit more pigment hold my lid out and do this. Do not do that unless you absolutely have to or you will end up with super deep creases and I can promise you, you won't like them because they only ever get worse. Right, I'm just cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth and I am going to go into short knee which actually is one of the shimmers but it's a shade that I want to try I'm just going to buff that in like a windshield wiper movement through my crease because obviously now I've set the lid with the first colour I can go straight to blending with this and I'm just going to blend along that line. I'm not going to take it up the eye at all because I still want that first colour to show. I just want to add a little bit of depth in with this shade. I'm not entirely sure it's working the way I want it to. I'm going to have to put a different colour on top. It's not giving me... It's, 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 it's too similar in tone I think to what I've already put on. It's not going to give me the definition that I want. Okay, so that's lovely colour though, just not what I wanted this time. So I'm going to clean the brush off again. And I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into this purple, that's quite a difficult shade to do as well. And it's called Girlies. That's quite nice. Oh, there's quite a bit of kick up on this one, so just be sure to tap your brush off. So I'm going to do the same thing again, that I've just done, that's better. Go through in a windscreen, your wiper movement, backwards and forwards, really, really lightly. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that loose kick up in the pan. And I'm going to do little circular movements again, just making sure I stay in touch with that line all the way across, so I'm not going up the eye. And then I'm going to do the same thing, 
reverse the direction of the brush and come back again. And I'm going to do this a couple of times just to make sure it's really, really well blended because I don't want any sharpness. I'm just going to really lightly buff along the edge where the two colours meet just to get a nice blend there. Okay, I like that. So, the same thing with this eye. Windscreen wipe and movement first. If you find it easier with your eye open, open your eye. Obviously with this eye I can actually close it to show you what I'm doing because I'm blind in this one and if I close the other eye, wouldn't be a lot of makeup happening. Although I do still, my, my eldest godchild has challenged me to the no makeup, uh, the no mirror makeup challenge. So I am going to have to do that one day. So yay. That's going to be interesting. So you can see again, I'm just light buffing circular movements backwards and forwards just gonna have a look on my yeah just it's really frustrating this side that I have to do this as I said if the circular movement works for you please don't do this I'm just going to buff really lightly where the two colours meet, just like I did on the other side, just to soften it up a little bit and get a nice blend. I'm really not worried about this fallout, I get more fallout this side anyway because the skin on this side is looser where it was pulled around so much, uh, which is why I did my base after I've done my eyes. Now I'm sitting back and looking at them and it looks like I've gone a little bit higher with the purple this side. So I'm just going to come back in and bring this side up to match because although we used the same brush and did exactly the same thing, your eyes aren't symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them over onto yourself. Yes, that's heavily implied sarcasm. It annoys the heck out of me because every time I put a picture up on Instagram or Twitter, Unless it's got an, a very obvious Snapchat filter on it. The first few pictures that I put up are always no filter. No Photoshop, no Facetune, no nothing. So that what you see is an achievable makeup look. And you see people that have put pictures up that are, you can see the Facetune. You can see that they've, you know, they've not got any pores or texture on their skin at all. And yet they get picked up by companies and put on PR lists. And you just like... That's why I like the la Lady Gaga. She's um, released some pictures for her house makeup that she's bringing out. H-A-U-S. So I think that's her surname, isn't it? Like Fenty is Rihanna's surname. But... Um, the promo picture she's released, you can see texture on her skin. You can see folds in her eyelid. And I'm just, yes, thank you. Well done. You're showing us what the product actually looks like. And what we as normal people, without Photoshop and without filters and without putting a filter on your camera and stuff, can actually achieve and I love 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 that I wish more companies would do it I really do okay mini rant out of the way uh, and I'm going to go into the navy blue called navy oh, okay um, I'm going to use this Morphe M562 it's a really good brush especially if you have got hooded eyes because you can really get some detail done with that so I'm just going to pick up Oh, this one's got some kick up to it as well. Okay. Pack the brush. And I'm going to run it through a 
crease again to deepen that up a little further. Obviously, this is the you know when when I'm saying going through my crease, if you've had to move your crease up, that's the crease you follow. Um, I always tend to put a deeper, deep, deep, deep colour through the crease um, because that way, if you have created your own new crease further up by using a deeper colour it gives the impression that that bit of the eye is further away so it when people are, are talking to you obviously not this close but at a standard talking distance it, they won't be able to see that you've created the mobile lid because it will look as if that part of your eye is folded back now what I'm going to do I'm not adding any more pigment to the brush I'm going to do the tiniest circles possible just along that line because I don't want to go up into the purple. I'm just trying to soften the edges of what I've put down. So really tiny little circles in and out but staying on that line. Now can you see the, the additional depth that's given to that eye? Love it. Love, love, love it. And I'm going to pick up some of the kick up. I'm just going to add some in the outer corner here. Hmm. I might do a halo eye actually. And I'll put some just in the very inner part of the lid just there too. Okay, right, oh, I've got an eyelash in this eye, so I'm just going to try and see if I can get it, because it's fidgeting the heck out of me. Okay, I think I've got it. Right, so, again, I'm going back into the kick up on that pan to do the same thing on this eye. So I'm running backwards and forwards with this. And then without adding any more pigment, Tiny little circles all the way along and back again just to soften the edges. And do that as many times as you need to until you're happy with the blend. Actually didn't do too badly that time, that's good. Right, got a little bit on the inner corner here. And some on the outer corner here. Hmm. I had to clean the brush off. Now's the fun bit. Now we get to play with shimmer. Well, pressed pigments. Now, pressed pigments do perform differently to normal eyeshadows. Uh, if you've got sensitive skin, it is a good idea to, to put some on the, the crook of your, el your elbow, for example, um, just for 24 hours or so, um, and make sure that you're not going to have an allergic reaction to it, because some people can. And um, and that you can get some staining from them because they have fewer. When you make an eyeshadow, you have coloured molecules, and you have molecules of things like mica and talc and silicones, which help them to blend. Okay, so pressed pigments have a higher number of colour pigments as opposed to blending pigments so when you put them on the eye they'll tend to grab straight on and then they won't want to blend so you do have to treat them slightly differently um, especially if you're using matte pressed pigments because blending them really doesn't work you literally have to like I did with this blue when I first tapped it on that's kind of how you have to deal with pressed pigments if you're using matte ones Shimmer ones, a little bit different. You can get a lot of fallout with them. So, 
This is um, actually a nail art brush. I picked up a set of about six from eBay yonks ago. But I love them because they come down so thin. Okay, so it's what I want for my accuracy. Never go into a pressed shadow, be it shadow or pigment, with a wet brush. Always put the shadow onto the brush and then wet the brush. Otherwise you will get hard pan and you will eventually screw the whole thing up. So I'm going to start off by going into Destiny. Spelled D-E-S-T-I-N-E-E. -E. I'm just going to load some pigment onto this brush. Like so. This pigment is very, very firmly packed. Not that easy to actually get some onto the brush. There we go. And then this is just a vanilla and coconut fixing spray. You can use any spray. You can use priming spray, setting spray, moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus. You can just use a bottle of clean water. Um, we're just going to wet the pigment. And then I'm going to dry the ferrule off here to make sure no moisture goes down to loosen. Um, the bristles. I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so you can see what I'm doing with this eye because obviously I can't close it. I'm just going to pop some of this pigment just on the edge of the blue there and on the edge of the blue just there. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to clean the brush because although I'm going back into the same pigment I need the brush to be dry. So, clean and dry the brush, definitely dry and load up your brush again. I might actually load both sides this time so I've got a little bit extra if I need it. So, dry the ferrule off, and then a little bit of pigment on this side, and you can see it is opaque enough to actually cover the navy, which is good. And a little bit of pigment. Sorry, I need to put a little bit more on this side here so that the centre bit is about the same size because I left more space this side. There we go. Right, clean the brush. And then I'm going to go into Boca, which is the other pressed pigment. And it's lilac. Do you like me? Good lilac. Wet the brush, dry the ferrule. Grab my little mirror so you can see what I'm doing. And just apply it to Was that my front door? Let me go and check. Don't go anywhere. Yes, it was. Right, clean the brush off again to go back in and pick up more pigment. And then do the same this side. And then dry the brush, pick up a little bit of dry pigment, and just pop 
that on top of the wet paper. And I did do that with this eye to see what it looked like, to see if I liked it. And then realised I hadn't pressed the record button. But I'm always honest with you. I told you what I've done. I didn't just do it off camera with this one as well, which I could have done. A lot of people would have done. But I'm not a lot of people. Okay, uh, I'm going to pause you now while I do my foundation, etc. And I'll be back. Well, for you, it's going to be instant. For me, it's going to be next to my press and recall button. Um, I'll be back to finish this eye look off. Okay. Now, as you can see, I decided to do purple brows. because I just thought it would set the look off really nicely. Um, it's a Revolution Pro Brow Pomade uh, in the shade, what shade is it? Royal Purple. I keep wanting to say Purple Rain but um, it's not, it's Royal Purple. Okay, now grabbing this flat top brush I'm going to go back into navy because I've been struggling recently. One of the symptoms of my fibro is that I get very watery eyes. Add to that the really high pollen count we've got and my hay fever and I can't keep eyeliner on to save my life. But I have a trick. Using exactly the same shade that I've used as the deepest shade through the crease. I'm going to use the same colour and run it underneath the eye, about two thirds of the way along. And then I'm going to really load the brush up and just at the edge here, just stamp it on so that you get, it's, it's almost imperceptible when you're back here. But it's just so you get one ever so much deeper strip just on the edge there and that gives you, I don't know if you can tell, it gives you the same illusion of pulling the eye out into a cat shape so it does the same thing of lifting the shape of the eye and making it look more youthful without having to do eyeliner so if you like me are struggling feel free to try this one out and see if that works for you I can tell I'm in pain, this eye keeps looking at my nose. That's how I ended up going blind. I had a squint that should have been fixed and wasn't. If you want a story time on that, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll film and get ready with me telling you all about it. Okay, now um, I'm going to use a different colour to blend out underneath the eye, but I'm going to stop right at the edge here so that I'm not going over that darker stripe otherwise you lose the whole effect of it. So this is actually the brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette and I think I'm going to go in with a mixture of Bacchanal which is this bright blue and a girlies which was the purple that I put on so I'm going to dip once into both and use that just to buff along the lower lash line here just to soften that line a little bit see the difference that makes So do this side. I'm really liking this eye look, I have to be honest. There's a gorgeous lime green that I'm really tempted to put into my inner corner, but I get the feeling that might actually ruin the whole look. <laughs> I might have to do a citrusy look to use that one. Right. Let's use this one. This is the Ofra Nikki highlighter in 
Space Baby, which as you can see has got like a blue shift to it. So it'll pick up beautifully with these. This is a really old lip brush. I bought it off of eBay uh, about 10 years ago now. But it's the perfect shape to run up under the tail of your brow and do you in a corner. This is why I tend to leave sort of three or four mils between the colour and my brow. Just so the brow highlight really shows up. In some editorial looks I have taken the colour up higher but for more blended looks I do tend to leave that gap. Now you can just do your inner corner like this but what I've found is really flattering is to bring it underneath the tear duct and just start to blend it really softly with the colour that you've run underneath the eye. See the difference between the two? Hmm. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more of this highlight all over my face, put some mascara on, do something with my wet hair from the shower, choose a lippy, and I will be right back with my final thoughts, uh, my final first impression, my, I'll be back in a minute, okay? It's hot, my brain is melting. I am back. Uh, regular viewers will know my hair is usually longer than this, I chopped about three inches off last night. It was getting far too hot and I'm like, ugh, I need to get some hair out of this head, so... It's quite funny though because I've um, got one of these hair cutting guide things I stick on and just get hubby's right, um, hair thingy and just go zzz. Brilliant haircut in like two seconds almost. <laughs> but every time I say to him, pass me your clippers, he freaks out because um, I was on some meds last year which made my hair start to fall out. I'm like, oh, that's it, I'm going to shave my bloody head off, I'm fed up with this. So every time I say to him, pass me the clippers, he freaks out, he's like, whoa, whoa, how much are you taking off? <laughs> Bless him. Right, as you can see, the uh, blue highlight, pretty much everywhere. Mascara is the Catrice Glam and Dull Volume Waterproof, which is the dupe for uh, Benefit Bad Girl Bang, but it's waterproof. Apparently they've brought out a blue one now. Um, benefit with uh, which is waterproof so uh, I might keep my eye out and see if I can pick one of those up and the lippy is actually a Jouer high pigment pearl lip gloss with coconut oil in shade Ibiza very difficult to show you when it's this kind of packaging let's just show you the component instead shall we there we go Right, so, oh and setting spray is because it's hot and because I want this to last. Slay all day coconut, um, I do have a discount code with them, that one is affiliated. All my discount codes are listed in the description box so just have a read through, see if there's anything you want to use, they're all clearly stated whether I earn from them or not. But what we're talking about today is this. This tropical carnival palette. Now, I didn't buy Tammy's first palette because partly because the, the colours didn't call for me, but also because she'd done it in those really tiny, thin, um, like um, like Urban Decay's Naked format, really skinny. I'm not keen on palettes like that. I prefer a nice round or a square or an oblong pan. Um, I just... If you're using a super fluffy brush like this one, you know, the brush is wider than the, the shadow, so you do have the issue that you tend to pick up the colours either side of it. So that, that's why I'm not keen on those, but also because 
the colour storage just didn't call me but when I saw I love the fact they've now done this with the, they've started to do this with the packaging because now I don't need to keep the box to see which one is which because before all of them were just plain black on the front so you had to either look at the back of them or open them up to see exactly what they were but if they're going to start doing this with all of them that's fantastic because now I don't have to keep the box and I can recycle the cardboard so what do I think of this so far now obviously I've only used a few of the shades um, I don't think I put swatches up earlier if I think on if I move the camera that way a bit huh? hello fan um, if I move it I'll try and remember to put swatches up here for you but I mean obviously today I've only used like blues and purples but I did use both of the pressed pigments um, what do I think of it so far I actually quite like it um, some of the mats are pressed a bit hard so you do have to work a little bit to get them onto your brush but they do come up um, some of them take a little bit of work in terms of building the colour up but I've noticed that Revolution tend to do that when they have super bright colours like this they tend to press them a bit harder so that initially you don't get the intensity of colour that you see in the pan and I think the reason they've done that is so that complete beginners aren't suddenly frightened because they see this huge splodge of colour um, and then if it doesn't start to blend out how they want it freaks them out and they, they run away from colour forever and just stick to like neutrals um, so I think that's why Revolution have done it this way and in that respect I don't mind spending a little bit more time to build them up because you can build them up I mean you, you saw from this it didn't take a huge amount of effort to build the colour up to how I wanted it to look and to get it accurate to how it looks in the pan so um, yes some of the mats take a bit of work because obviously I've, I've played with this off camera as well um, some of the mats do take a bit of work to build up but they all do build up to how they look in pan just some take a little bit more time than, than others uh, do I like this? Yes I do. Is it going to be in my regular rotation in the summer? Yes, probably quite likely. Um, I've got a lot of bright rainbow palettes. I've, got, I've still got quite a few palettes that I need to film with. Um, but I do like this. I like the colour scheme and it is the kind of thing that I would reach for and I would use on a daily basis and I have been using. Um, I use this pretty much every day for a week when I was trying it out because I'm trying to do that now although effectively you're seeing a first impression because it's the first time I've filmed with it I try and use the palette at least once or twice prior to filming just so that I've used more of a variety of the shadows and can give you a more overall um, review of the palette because I kept saying oh I'll do a palette roundup at the end of the month and I just kept forgetting basically fibro fog, chronic pain, memory, what, what's that again? <laughs> like a goldfish sometimes um, but yeah I mean this is absolutely worth your money if you know if you want to get into a colourful palette and there's enough sort of oranges and yellows and stuff people that are just starting to move away from you know your brown so you could start off maybe pop doing a, a neutral through your crease and popping one of these colours on your lid until you're more used to colour and then start building up and getting more um, more adventurous with your colours but I like this palette I'm glad I've got it um, having used it for a week or so would I still buy it yes I would I like this palette. There you go. That's straightened me back up again because I'm. There you go. I was slightly skew whiffed with it twisted around that way. Right. Um, please double check if you are one of my 4F babies that you are still subscribed 
that your uh, bell is rung and that you have chosen all notifications, not some, because I'm still getting people say to me, you were in my newsfeed, but I wasn't subscribed to you, or, oh my goodness, I just saw your film and thought, oh, I hadn't seen anything you'd put up for a while, I thought with your chronic pain you'd, you'd not been able to post, and then realised I'd missed about two weeks worth of filming because I'd been unsubscribed, or my notifications had been unrung. Um, I, I genuinely don't know what YouTube are up to at the moment. But they're certainly not being very helpful to smaller creators, I will say that. So, yeah, please double check. If you are new, however, and this is your first viewing of this <sighs> slightly broken, to be honest, mad half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who lives in the south of England, uh, and you enjoyed this and perhaps want to check out another few films, I have an awful lot for you to choose from. Uh, feel free to pick a playlist or just go to my most recent film, scroll through and see what takes your fancy. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, we would love to welcome you here to our 4F family. Everybody is welcome, regardless of age, colour, sexual orientation, nationality, anything. So long as you are polite, to people when you are chatting in the comments, then you are welcome to join the 4F family. And I really hope you would because we're a really, really good bunch of people. Um, so far, touching wood, I've not had to block or ban anybody. So, you know, that says a lot. Right, that's quite enough silliness for me from one day. So all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.